Hi, this is Business with Dave. In this video, I want to give you a one-to-one, step-by-step guide to creating a burger street food business. And let's see how it goes. But we'll be going through each kind of step, looking through the menu, what kind of equipment you'll be using, or what you should be planning, and what kind of concepts you should or shouldn't be doing, and what kind of service as well. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. So firstly, we're going to look at the menu idea and concept. So if you want a Bob Standard burger street food business, then I would go for the classic hamburger and then you can add cheese or bacon to it. So you could have that as special add-on to your main sort of signature burger. And then for the sides, you would have your, your potato, hand cut fries, hopefully, or a sweet potato fries with some of your homemade sauces as well, like ketchup and mayonnaise. So that's your Bob Standard menu. You could differentiate yourself by doing organic burgers, making your own brioche buns, making your own sauces. It's just some of the stuff to really dif differentiate you from other people and other different burger places, potentially in different market stores. You want to make sure you can stand out and the best way of doing that is to make everything fresh the best you can. But obviously if you obviously you could charge a higher price for that kind of burger, but if you don't want to go for the higher end, you want to go for the medium to lower end, you could literally buy everything in bulk. Buy your burgers, buy all your patties and stuff. You don't even need to make your own patties, just buy everything in bulk, make it there and sell it in volumes. But obviously if you want to go the more premium range, you want to make your own patties, burgers and stuff like that, obviously that will overall hopefully will taste better, so hopefully your product will taste good, that people will buy it, but obviously you could charge a higher price and obviously that's the sort of range that you're going for. In terms of size as well, you could buy everything in bulk, again frozen for, for example, frozen fries, frozen sweet potato fries. Or you could go the slightly harder route and put more effort and time into it and charge a slightly higher price where you make everything from scratch, fry it all up and show your customers that you are different from other people. So in terms of service, you go for assemble to order or you go for cook to order. So in terms of assemble, you could cook all your patties beforehand and literally put everything and assemble all the ingredients together and get that burger out to the customer within a minute and that will be quick sales. You go through volumes, you could charge a medium to hold low price and get through those volumes. But if you used to go for cook to order, this will take a bit more time. It might take five minutes to make a burger, but you could charge a slightly premium price for that burger and hopefully you make everything from scratch and that you're showing customers that you're giving them that cooking experience, that viewing experience that they wouldn't often get if they were to make it at home or if they were to go to a restaurant. Because you're in a street food environment and where people can see what you're doing, it's a, it's a great visual way to entice people to come to you and potential smells as well. You cannot overlook the types of smells that is going through each and every street food market because the smells really drag you in. So if you could do that, charge a higher price, premium burger, really put a name for yourself, then that is awesome and a great way to start. So in terms of equipment, you could go for a flat grill and just literally cook the burgers there. Work your magic, make sure it tastes amazing, make sure it's juicy or what type of burger you're actually selling. So if it's a juicy big ass burger, then you will learn how to cook it in that sort of equipment. Or if you used to go for a barbecue, you could have a big barbecue out there. Smokes everywhere, barbecue's fresh, you get that smoky burger taste which you wouldn't often get from a flat grill. So do you consider different equipment that you can use and the different effects it will have on your burger and taste. In terms of pricing, like we went through it before, you go from high, medium to low, and depending on the quality as well, highest, obviously the highest quality, highest quality ingredients, everything made from scratch potentially, or at least half the stuff is made from scratch. Then you got the medium to low, where you're potentially making everything from scratch, but obviously you're pre-making as or half cooking as much as you can, have everything ready and just assemble to order or the really low end where you get everything frozen, you have everything pre-made as well, all the 
sources that you get from big wholesalers you literally sell in bulk and sell in volumes and you are focusing on grabbing as many people as you can but in order to make up for the potential revenues that you'll be getting in. None of the approaches are bad, it's just whether you want to go for the high, medium or low range and what your concept is all about because you want to make sure it's on brand and not just laughing about and just trying to make as much as you can and not having a meaning to it. Because honestly you want to create brand loyalty and the best way of doing that is to make sure you distinguish your product and your business from other competitors and the first thing to do that is clearly branding and how your product looks and how it tastes, how it's well received, if it's positive feedbacks then you are onto a winner. If there's still room to improve, that's where you have chances to improve your product and your range and to make sure you can improve your store or your product every time you serve and every time you go into trade. Because that's the key here, consistency is super important, making sure your product tastes great every single time, whether it's you cooking it from scratch or whether it's pre-made and you're cooking it there, it needs to be consistent, it needs to have a nice flow to it and you need to just focus on that. So obviously if you have more sides like the hand cut fries or like just normal white potato fries or sweet potato fries or onion rings, all these extra things that people could add to it as a sort of treat for themselves or as a small little starter, do do that if you, don't, if you have time, if you have the space to do it and obviously to make sure it tastes amazing as well because it will add to your final amount each trading day so anything you could do extra hopefully you can sell that and add to that product range because as long as it sort of looks like a complete menu people will be drive will be driven towards your store and hopefully you grab their attention and get them to buy from you but of course if you want a shorter menu just keep it simple hamburger if you want cheese one pound extra if you want to add bacon another pound extra hand cut fries sweet potato fries homemade sauces you can't go wrong with that literally if you could perfect every single process if you could perfect every single item then you are already onto a winner you don't need to do anything too fancy none of that is necessary but you can go as far as you really want to go and how hard you want to try so here is some random concepts that I've seen around or new concepts that hopefully potentially will grow into something else in the future. But here are some ideas. Homemade burgers, so vegan plant-based burgers, Indian style burger inspired, Southeast Asian flavors inspired burgers, organic farm range burgers from farm to consumer, bunless burgers, these deconstructed burgers, anything that is a cuisine inspired burgers, classic American style burgers, Korean style burgers, giant ass burgers, mini ciders, lamb burgers, chicken katsu style burgers, and of course different sides as well so you can have cheesy fries, fried croquettes, leafy green salads, so many different options. Go wild with imagination, if, as long as it tastes good and as long as there's a sort of demand in that market or market store or environment, then you are good to go. So always try to give it a try if you do want to try to do a burger concept. Obviously there's so many different combinations that you can combine. Here in this video there are just so many different examples. So if you do want to try to do a burger street food business, do pick one, two, three, combine it. Make sure it's original, make sure it's something that you can do really well and that it will taste really good and that you tried it as well. Obviously ask your friends and family or people in the public to see what they think or just go to the market stores and propose an idea. See where you could potentially sell and hopefully you can turn that idea into a successful business. Obviously if you don't try, you will never know so that is my best piece of advice for you. Thanks for watching this video guys, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. We'd we'll love to see those numbers go up and every time there is a new subscriber, I'm just like, yes, another one, another two, and let you be one of those as well. And obviously, if you like the content, keep following this channel and I've been Business with Dave. I'll see you in the next video, see you. And don't forget to leave a comment below if you want to know some more information or if you're a bit stuck, so yeah.